Um, the study group was uh, started for uh, Rifkua Shalema for strong health. Uh, and Baruch Hashem this week, uh, we have good news from everyone, Baruch Hashem, that they're doing a little bit better. Um, first, Rav Yitzchak Paivish Ben uh, Brenda Marka, um, who had been uh, with a couple of already uh, classes um, in uh, this wonders, uh, which is uh, Baruch Hashem a step uh, in the right direction. Um, we have Blue Mabat Ginan Del Tova, who was also, I saw her the other week, it seemed like she's doing a little bit better as well. Give her the sham, she should have a full Rufua Shalema. Um, my son, Levia Ovia Benayla, is also uh, having a bit of a tough week, but Baruch Hashem, much, much better. And uh, my youngest, uh, Rafa Nulad Benayla, who um, has been at his new hospital for a week. And Baruch Hashem, it's uh, so far uh, in the right direction. So may he also have a very uh, speedy, strong report, Shalema. Um, okay, so um, just to share with everyone, uh, I was thinking to dwell a little bit on uh, the second part of last week, as you can see on the screen that we started, which has the advisors, um, the path to giving the right advice and to, uh, let's call it to coaching or to uh, going through a, a process with uh, someone. Um, however, this week's wonder has such great things that we're going to start with those and see if there's any time left over to get back to, uh, to that. Um, maybe even we'll push it off to next week. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. Um, Okay, a little bit of an introduction. Um, as we know in the uh, Holy Spirit, uh, um, the crown, which is um, on top of everything, we know that uh, uh, almost in every um, society there was a, a symbol of some sort of a hat or a crown on top of the king or the leader. Um, it's the same way that symbolizes something above that sits on him. Um, and we know that uh, every Jew um, actually at dinner with uh, 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 my son Yosef was uh, showing us the two crowns that he drew up that uh, every Jew had in Mount Sinai. So um, um, the, uh, the crown has uh, three heads on it. Uh, again, people draw a crown many ways the crown that we draw has three heads. Um, those three heads are um, um, very deep thing in, in Kabbalah, um, which are very high concepts, um, but they're in this generation by Rabbi Ginsburg, they're brought to uh, the brought down the concepts that we can more uh, connect to. And the highest level of the crown, um, and again, we said that the crown is something that's above me, that influences me, that when we want to show that a king has something special to him, he wears a crown. Um, the same concept, um, This the highest level of the crown, the highest head, uh, of the crown is um, is um, emuna, is faith. The simple faith is the highest level, and we'll get into. There's so many implications of that, but um, the next level is uh, tanug, is uh, more you can translate it as pleasure or um, just basically enjoyment. Um, it's a higher level. And the lowest level, but still of the crown, of the highest level is ratzon. Ratzon could be translated as desire um, or just a simple wanting, a want, I want. Um, the biggest thing to keep in mind when we, start, when we speak about ratzon, of something that we want, wanting by default means you don't have something. If I want something, that means I don't have it which is part of the fact that it's the lowest level, it's missing something. And that thing that it is missing 
is leading towards our whole being, meaning everything that we do is connecting to uh, what we want. There's a famous saying that Ein davar haomed nothing could stand um, a strong desire or a strong, um, uh, um, let's call it even in the sense of focus, um, but a strong want. So if you want something, if you want it, you'll get it. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure there's better um, uh, different uh, statements that could be said about the, the desire and the wanting that goes into where we stand. So um, now we'll go into this week's uh, shirim. Um, there is an introduction this week. It's basically a, um, a point that was taken out of the shirim that's explained um, usually, if I'm not mistaken, um, Harav Yosipeli. Um, he uh, writes it up. Obviously, Rabbi Ginsburg reviews it, but the goal is to, to make it something practical, like uh, uh, like an introduction to uh, the wonders of the week. Um, usually, I don't dwell on it because we just go straight to the to the shiurim for the classes. But I do want to touch it for a minute, just to um, to talk about it because I think it has a lot to do with what we um, with what we want. So. Um, we, Rabbi Ginsburg is explaining that Mashiach, in order to have real redemption, we need to want it. And I'm going to say something that I heard. Um, I don't know if Rabbi Ginsburg said it or <laughs> if uh, one of the students did, but it's, a, it's an amazing statement. We know that there's two sayings um, that Mashiach could come in one of two options. One option, the door. Shekulo Zakai, that means that everyone does the right thing and, 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 and is purified to the level that um, the Mashiach could come, that we're, we all do tshuva, we all repent and, 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 and get close to Hashem and then Mashiach come. Or Bedo Shekulo Chayat, which is a very interesting thing that basically we, <laughs> if there's a game, we can say you can either win the game or lose the game, but there's always going to be an end to the game. And the end is Mashiach, the end is, is redemption. So we can either have it that everyone does repentance and everyone comes back, or you can have it that uh, basically we lost. Everyone, do uh, kulo chayav. In a simple sense, kulo chayav means that everyone is, uh, is if, if there's zakai and chayav, that someone is purified and, 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 and is, the word I want to use is eligible. <laughs> The fact that English is not my first language allows me to improvise in that sense. But um, chayav means that everyone is uh, is guilty, is not uh, is not eligible, uh, in a simple sense, obviously. But uh, the explanation that I like to say is that chayav could also mean that everyone must have it. Like I must have any chayav, I must have something. So do shekulo chayav could be translated in a beautiful way that everyone must have Mashiach. Either do shekulo zakai, that in a simple sense, no one needs Mashiach because everyone is close to Hashem, everyone does mitzvot, no one has uh, evil inclination or anything. It's all purified, like a great tzaddik, so everyone is tzaddik and everything is beautiful. Um, but if that doesn't work out, the second option is that everyone is so connected, not in the sense of being in a high level, but in the sense of understanding that they want Mashiach, that, that they want this. They want it to the point that they must have it. Do shekulo chayav, that everyone must have Mashiach. And I think that's, that's uh, at least in my understanding, something a lot closer. And we can even say, if we want to kind of combine between them, we can say that when everyone understands that they want Mashiach, in a sense, everyone is, uh, is uh, everyone deserves to have Mashiach. So, um, the simple sense that um, that Mashiach is connected to to ratzon, to desire, to wanting, as we discussed. So first is the desire of, of Hashem, that God wants redemption. He wants us to go back to the way we used to be, or even on a higher level. Um, and we see this that um, when uh, when uh, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, the famous story in Mirah, asked Mashiach. Um, um, well, first um, he, he asked Mashiach, but then he asked Eliyahu and Nabi, when is Mashiach going to come? He says, when he, when he wants. 
So um, God wants and Mashiach wants. Um, and now we have to understand that we want. Now, um, we discussed in the, in the introduction the three, um, the three um, heads of the crown. So um, now we're going to put them all as part of desire or wanting. So the simple sense, not so the simple sense of desire, but even the pleasure, we can also call pleasure something that, 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 um, that I want, like a chefet. That, that, that you want something by sensing the pleasure of it. So um, that's a, a higher level of desire, not just desire to get something done. Usually when we want something, we're willing to do things that we do not connect to in order to get what we want. So simple sense, someone wants to get paid. So he goes and does a job that he doesn't necessarily want to do, but he does it because he wants to get paid. So many times our um, simple desire, our uh, wanting, allows us to just go ahead and, and do something that we don't want. Pleasure is a higher level where we do something not just by not connecting to it, but the opposite, by, by, by wanting the desire side of it, such as uh, when we do something for a loved one, for example. So, and the highest level of wanting, and this is something that I had to think about a little bit to try to connect it, but basically the highest level of faith, when we look at faith, which is the highest level of the crown. And again, when we talk about the crown, we'll stop for a second because it's just to connect a little bit. When we talk about the crown, we're talking about the higher level, meaning our higher level of understanding that influences our, our being. So when we ask someone that's running around and just doing something during the day, what do you want that makes him stop? If, if he's listening to you, it makes him stop and think and get out of his day to day and say, why am I doing this? You take out a bus driver. You say, why are you driving a bus? He stops, he thinks, and he says, well, I want to get paid. Okay, why do you want to get paid? Oh, because I want to have a family and I want to support my family. Okay, why do you want to have a family? And the more you speak about what you want of the higher level of the crown of something that's above our day to day, the more we can understand and connect our day-to-day -to, -day to a higher level, to a higher purpose in that sense. But the highest level is faith. Now, faith has the strongest connection to God, to the highest level um, in, in that sense. So I, I want to look at it from another angle, meaning that our highest level, which is faith to God, has the lowest level of the way God looks at us and says, I want you to be around. So the connection between our higher level is where Hashem goes down and, 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 and dwells on us. So the simple explanation in Kabbalah is that the highest level of the crown influences the dollar, the, the dot, which is uh, um, the um, level of understanding or the connection. We'll talk about that in, in a couple of minutes. Um, but the connection between them is, uh, is that we, God has a desire, has a wanting to have the world. He wants to have a, a lower level of, of existence that he's creating, even though it's, a, it's not as simple as that, it's not as simple, it's not, it's a, it has a much higher meaning and level, but at the end of the day, he wants to have this world. And when we have faith, what is our faith? Our faith is the basis of our um, of our um, existence, but also of our choices. We're choosing based on faith. We believe in God, and then we're choosing how to act in this world. Otherwise, our choices are, are more limited. It's a bit complicated to understand, but let's try to understand. When I have a choice, let me ask a simple question. If someone says to me, okay, you can walk right or walk left. But I'm telling you, if you walk right, you're going to make a million dollars. If you walk left, you're not going to make anything. Do I have a choice? So you can say, I have a choice. I can decide to walk left. But in a sense, the more that you're connect, the, the, the more that you're connected to something, the less choice that you have. So um, and again, this goes into a lot of psychology and 
the philosophy and a lot of different things that I don't have the time or uh, we don't have the uh, the space for and it's not what we're trying to say here. But the concept is the real choice is connected to God, which is limited. He's limitless. And therefore, when we want to have real choice, um, when a Jew wants to make a real decision, he's, he's connecting by faith to God's desire to have this world. But why are we saying all this? And we'll summarize with this. The, the, the heading of this is to um, focus our desire. That, um, again, a person walks his day to day. We all have our different jobs and, and, and family and, and issues and problems and our day to day. And many times when you walk your day to day, you're, you're losing focus of what you really want to do. And the main thing is, and again, we can have a small focus. Someone stops you and says, what do you want? And now you're focused, but you can have a much higher level of focus. As we discussed, you can say, why do you want that? Why do you want what, what really do we want? And what really we want is redemption. We want Geula, we want Mashiach, we want, we want to have a purified world that's connected to God, but without all these darkness that, that's making us have all these issues that we're dealing with. We want to just have a simple connection, but obviously we want to do it in a way that that is 100% connected to the way that God wants. So again, if we focus and we focus what we want and we want to have Mashiach and we're uh, running with that desire, as as the, as we say, Migdal Oz, Shem Avaya, Boya Lut, Sadiq Bin That um, in order to um, to be connected to to God in the highest level, we're going to run that a tzaddik, a righteous person, when we are Kulam Tzadik, the whole uh, Jewish people are tzaddikim, so we all want to run, and that running is connected to that desire, and the desire is to have Mashiach. So um, it's a, a little point. There's a lot more to talk about it, but, but the concept is to take everything that's above us and within our being and focus it and focus our desire in Mashiach. And once we do that, and everyone does that, that would allow God's desire to have redemption to be in this world. So that's uh, the first part. And um, now we're going to go into the first year of this week. So um, right after Pesach, the, the day after Pesach, Yisru Chag, um, the day after uh, the Passover holiday, um, Shmuel, who's uh, the grandson of Rabbi Ginsburg, uh, son of uh, uh, Shai Haramati, he's the... Uh, friend of ours, he's, uh, he lives in Yitzhar, he's a uh, Rosh Hashiva there. Um, so his son was uh, uh, putting on the film, and as part of doing that, he um, he went to Rabbi Ginsburg's house. And this is one of the first time after the uh, operation that Rabbi Ginsburg was, uh, went down uh, and had a shiur. And people that were there were amazed to see how he was now feeling well, but as he started talking and saying Torah, he got a complete uh, uh, different level of strength and uh, it was very nice to see. Uh, I've witnessed it also several times that during the day today, he's having a very hard time and there's a chance he should have a flash the mark. But when he starts talking Torah, it's just like a whole different level. Um, so Rabbi Ginsburg is teaching his, uh, his uh, grandson um, again, we're not going to get into, but it's, it's called a, a, a kiss of chassidut. That instead of just giving him a simple kiss, you know, uh, a grandfather can come to his grandson and hug him and kiss him. And it's very nice, but when you want to give him something that's on a whole different level, you give him a kiss of chassidut, which means you give him Torah that he can, that can influence him for the rest of his life. And also, is helpful to everyone else. So it's a, a very high level of love that um, um, now we want to connect to that and we want to try to understand. So there's a couple of things that Rabbi Ginsburg is speaking about and he's connecting between them. 
Uh, first thing is um, his grandson's name is Shmuel, just like the Rebbe Maharash, which is um, the fourth Rebbe of uh, Chabad. And um, um, second thing that he's speaking about is the fact that he's putting on tefillin, and we know that tefillin has a, a sense of tying things down. We're trying to explain based on Tanya, what are we tying down? And lastly, this, this shiur was given on the first day that we're wearing tefillin, which is the first day after, um, after Passover, which is a holiday that we don't put on tefillin, so that's, that is called Isru Chag. Um, comes from the Bitui Isru Chag Ba'avotim and Karnot Amizbeach, which is um, to tie up the uh, animal that we're going to bring uh, on the altar of the Mizbeach. Um, so Rabbi Ginsburg is taking all these things and connecting them. We're going to try to run through it um, and just try to uh, see how this connects all of us to what we're trying to, to, to do. Um, so first, Rabbi Ginsburg explains that uh, uh, the name Shmuel, which is on the Rebbe Marash, is connected to the famous saying of the Rebbe Marash, which is Lechatchila River. That the world said that if you go on, on from the bottom, you should go from the bottom. If not, you should go from the top. Um, but I say, no, 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 from the beginning, you go from the top. You go above the prophet. Um, there was an answer in one of the wonders, um, what was it, a couple of weeks back, and maybe more, a couple of months back, that were begins where they asked him, what does this mean? And he said a beautiful, beautiful explanation that he said that um, if you want to understand what does it mean to be on top, always to, to be jumping over problems, you should, when you're dealing with things, you should always surprise yourself. If you dealt with something in a way that surprises yourself, then you know you did the way that uh, the Rebbe Maharaj wanted us to do. And you were connected to this inspi inspirational Lechatchila River saying that we should be on top, that, that when there's a problem, we should just jump on top of it. So, um, it, it, it's a, it's a very interesting, beautiful way of looking at it that, you know, whenever we look at the way we handle, excuse me, both ourselves and the day to day, we should look at it as, did we do it in a way that was so inspirational that we surprised ourselves? Or was it expected? If your day was as expected, then you did not do well. If your day was shocking, wow, how, how did this happen? How did God help me to have such a busy, successful, um, inspirational day? That means you're doing it right. So um, how do you do this? This level is very, very much connected to being happy, being the single. That someone that is not happy is not going to be able to surprise himself. <laughs> uh, we know it from so many angles in life. That someone that's... Um, sad, depressed, whatever way you want to look at it. Someone that's not happy is not going to do something inspirational or something exceptional or something surprising. <laughs> that, that's just, I mean, if we could think about it for one minute, it's a very beautiful uh, way of, of teaching us how to, how to handle life. That if you want to do things inspirational, interesting, above normal surprising, you got to be happy. You got to be besimple. And once you're besimple, there's nothing stopping you. So, again, this is, uh, we have to connect also Rabbi Ginsburg telling it to his grandson that's putting out the film. It's just a very inspirational um, statement. Anyway, so now we're getting into the second topic, which is the, the, the day in the film. Um, so we're going to read something uh, from Tanya. And in Tfilin, um, uh, by way of uh, looking at it as a prod, as a, um, as a specific uh, individual, let's say, uh, if we want to... Um, but I'll explain a little bit uh, conceptually in a little bit. But, uh, but, uh, 
פרק הדש והיה כי הביאך, דהיינו שלא להשתמש בחוכמתו ובינתו שבנפשו, בלתי להשם לבדו. וכן לבטל ולהיכלל מבחינת הדעת שבנפש, שבנפשו הכוללת חסד וגבירה, שהם יראה ואהבה, שבליבו, מבחינת דעת העליון, הכולל חסד וגבורה, מלובש בפרשת שמה. So, we're going to say it very uh, shortly, and then maybe we'll explain it a little bit more later. But uh, what we're trying to tie down, when we put on Tfilin, and, and obviously we can just put the Pesukim on us, and that's it, but that's not what we do. We have strings attached. We're attaching ourselves to something. What are we attaching? We're attaching our wisdom and knowledge, our Chochmah Bina, of of our nefesh ha'elokit, of our neshama, of our soul, and connecting it to a higher level of um, um, uh, only, only, only that, that God has, as we spoke a little bit about the crown. Um, but now, the, uh, the Tanya is explaining it um, in a lower sense, or which brings it higher, בבחינת דעת העליון הכולל חסד וגבורה, המלובש בפרשת שמה והיה עם שמוע. ראינו, כמו שכתוב בשולחן הרב, לשעבד הלב והמוח. That if we want to take our heart and our brain and, 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 and connect it by, uh, let's call it, putting it under as, 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 uh, as, as slaves even, to to a certain higher concept, a higher um, connection, we have to do it with our, with our dad, with our uh, knowledge. And what does that mean? And uh, Rabbi Ginsburg is going to explain it later, but, um, um, you know, we'll, we're running out of time, so we'll just jump to the explanation. The simple explanation is someone is wise, someone is smart, okay? Someone has a lot of knowledge, okay, he's very, but what could be his problem? His problem when Rabbi Ginsburg gives an ex explanation of someone very smart and knowledgeable that plays computer games. That he doesn't have the knowledge of how to connect his wisdom and his knowledge, he doesn't have it um, uh, connected to something that's important. And he can waste it all on Computer games, a simple example. So you see someone very, very knowledgeable, someone that can really help, let's, let's take a simple person that can help humanity, that can help society, that can develop great things, that can come up with really nice inventions and ways for everyone to, to be happier or healthier or whatever. A person can simple concept, obviously um, there are higher levels of someone that can bring down to run. Etc. Etc. What does he do all day? He plays computer games. He even figured out a way to make money doing it. So that's just a way of wasting your your wisdom. So it's the same thing that we're, we're trying to connect our chokmah bina, our, our, um, our wisdom and our knowledge, and just trying to connect it to, to Hashem, and trying to also connect it to something something special, to something something important, something that, that, that is going to be useful and instead of chaz shalom that we can waste it. We can, God forbid, make it go to places that are not useful. Um, so to, just to explain this point again, what Rabbi Ginsburg is saying that one of the kavanot, one of the things that we can think about and dwell on and, and, and uh, really connect to when we put on our tefillin, or um, uh, we know that uh, women have the concept of tefillin on a higher level, uh, but the point that we want to connect to is that we want to tie ourselves to Hashem. We want to take our wisdom, take our knowledge, take everything that we have, and connect it to a higher purpose, not just waste it, v'shalom, in this world. Um, this is also connected to the holiday, the um, we know that the last, uh, the day after the holiday is called Isru Chag, to tie down the, the holiday. Um, usually we say to tie down everything that, we, that we've learned or that we have experienced, but 
in a simple sense, is to tie down the, the higher level of being that we were on when we were on the holiday, um, the chesed and the gvura, the, the might and the, uh, and the kindness and the loving kindness and everything that had to do with it, to tie it down to this, this world. When does it happen? When does it all get tied down? Ad kal no tamiz be'a. Well, what does that mean? So the simple sense is that you take an animal and you tie it to the mizbeah, and then you can bring it to the altar, you can bring it as an offering. But what that means within ourselves, our offerings, okay, that we that we have, that our altar is to take our desires that a person has, is our animal instincts, as um, scientists can call it, and, 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 and bring it up to Hashem and then just say, no, we're not going to go based on our instincts, but rather we're going to go based on God's... Uh, Knowledge, God's uh, Torah, guidance. So that that is the mizbeach. Now, how do we know that this went well? Kamot is that we that we're inspired by it. That it, it, it's it's makrim, that it, it uh, inspires us to the level that we're not only feeling like we lost something, but rather the opposite. We feeling like we gained something. We won. <laughs> there was a battle between our instincts and desires and between what's useful and important, what's connected to God, and we won the battle. So the sense of winning turns it all around. Okay, let's say you're carrying something heavy, and you really want to unload it, and yeah, you don't want to do it, but then you get to where you want to get, and you can offload it in the right place. What's the first sense that happens? You're happy. You have that, 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 that click, the connection of, now we're connected. That's kanota mizbeach. That's the sense that we're looking for. That that it's not only oh, it's such a hard thing to do that we have to. Uh, let's talk about Shabbat in a simple sense. That we have a day that we can connect to the internet or uh, use uh, electric in many different forms and and etc. That we can't be on our phone. So many things that we're giving up. When does it when does it become kanota mizbeach? When does it become the level that we want connected? When we feel like, no, we're not giving up anything, we won. We gain something much higher. By giving something up, we gain something much higher. And even today, I was, I was listening to um, something about business, and the guy was bringing the example from the Jewish Sabbath, that, that, that people that have the uh, ability to disconnect gain something much higher, can, can connect during the week much better. Same sense over here. If we want to connect in a higher level, how do we know that we've gotten over the uh, lower level? Is that when when it, when we feel that we're inspired and we're connected, that's called karnota mizbeach, that we tie the holiday to the mizbeach. There's a lot more to discuss. <laughs> we kind of touch a couple points, but I do want to say that that this is very inspirational that what Rabbi Ginsburg gave uh, his son. That number one. The, the understanding that when we connect to our uh, tefillin, what we're tying down is our desire, and we're tying it down to God's uh, wanting, and with that we can win up to that level. And also he's telling him that if you want to be inspired, if you want to be able to do it right, you got to be happy. So simple, but uh, very uh, deep and inspirational. So again, it's... Um, Wednesday, and uh, maybe I'll leave a minute or two if someone has any questions. Um, I think the microphone could be open. There's also a chat. How, how do we how do we tie the chachma chachma of the goyim to I to go again, just maybe a little bit louder. Uh, how do we sometimes we, we seem to often use the Chochmah of the Goyim as a reference in psychology? I think so, instead of ignoring it completely, we will talk about Freud or whatever. So, when I heard that you're asking, and correct me because maybe I'll put my microphones a little bit closer. Speakers over here. Okay, so what you're saying is, what do we do with the uh, secular psychology? Or is that the we question? Often, they said there is Chachma in the Goyim, right? Okay. And, we, and 
Rabbi Ginsburg's students often quote, very often, we bring in principles from outside psychology. We also say that it's nonsense. People often, often refer to it. Okay, so I'll say something very interesting, but since it's hard to hear, let me just connect my uh, fan over here. Um, and there was one time a class uh, a couple of years back in uh, Kfar Chabad that Rabbi Ginsburg spoke about it and he explained what the difference between um, Torah and Chokhmah, between God's Torah and between general wise and smart things that we can find everywhere that we know the Chokhmah Bagoyim Tamim, that we should believe that there is, there is wisdom um, to some of the things the guy was saying. So what is the difference? The difference is that when we hear Torah, when we learn Torah, when we learn starting from the actual Bible and going down to all the explanations afterwards, it's absolute emet, absolute truth. When we look at other um, concepts in psychology and in good, we know that there's points of wisdom in it. But it's not absolute and it's not truth the way it's told. It's just you can take from it and connect it. <coughs> Excuse Sorry, me. So when we're looking at the secular psychology, we're taking certain points of wisdom that God put there and we're connecting it to our Torah, which is complete truth. And that creates a, a beautiful. Um, 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 a beautiful way of, of intertwining and, and, and gaining things, and everyone can gain from it. Science can gain from connection to Torah. That it could be opened up to things that it, it didn't hear, have even the beginning of an understanding to it. And, and Torah can gain that when we connect science to Torah, we're able to give a much easier explanation in this world. So, and there's a lot more of things to gain from that. It's, uh, uh, there's a lot. There's a lot to talk about that. Uh, one of the things that I really liked is that when Rabbi Ginsburg gave a couple of classes about the quantum theory, because that's the one of the uh, beautiful places in science that they admit that things are not as they understand, and this world is a lot more um, deep than they uh, than they grasp it. So, okay. Well, well. I hope that answered a little bit of the question of. What we're doing with the secular psychology. Any, anything else? Anyone else? Okay, again, I urge everybody to read the Wonders of the Week. You can get it in email every week, and um, there's a lot of really beautiful things. And last week we're still in the middle. I don't know if we'll have time to um, open it, but uh, we can. Uh, last week is, is a really uh, important and and, and uh, let's call it useful everything is useful but that's really useful in, in a very easy to understand way of how to give the right treatment the right um, advice the right um, coaching many different ways of looking at it um, so uh, um, I hope we will have some more time to, to dwell on that and uh, I want you to have a uh, uh, Shabbat Shalom and, and a good week and uh, we'll speak again next week.